hi welcome back to your new lesson in this lesson we are going to learn how you can choose a microcontroller for your application it has been always very difficult to choose a right microcontroller for your project it's really very difficult to understand what is your requirement and which microcontroller is going to satisfy your requirement with the limited uh, resources that's mean with the limited uh, 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 the power consumptions and uh, of course the price is also there is a huge factor in an embedded system there are so many manufacturer in the market who makes microcontroller 8 bit 16 bit and 32 bit microcontrollers so there are basically four major player uh, nowadays who are making microcontrollers uh, those are the free scale free scale microcontroller and then of course we have Atmel AVR microcontroller then we have Intel's 8051 microcontroller and then finally we have a peak microcontroller so these are the four major into 8 bit and the 16 bit microcontroller and then we have another microcontroller the fifth type of microcontroller is MSP microcontroller MSP 430 it is made by the Texas instrument micro Texas instruments and then the sixth type of microcontroller we have uh, R microcontrollers so these are the the basic uh, uh, the microcontroller types and the the microcontroller the data bits is the 8 bit we have a 16 bit we have a 32 bit we have a 64 bit microcontroller so here you see here there is a huge amount of uh, the variation into if you are microcontrol uh, into the available microcontrollers and it's really very difficult to choose which is going to fit into your design so what we can say the designer must follow the three basic criteria to uh, while selecting these microcontroller the first criteria is uh, uh, what is the computational need you can say computational need and the second criteria the availability of the software and the hardware development tools availability or you can say the ease of huge and the third one is reliability okay so how much do you want the powers and then what is the ease of use while selecting that microcontroller and how reliable that microcontroller is after that once you make these decision then you can go for a pricing factor and of course for a form factor so if we take it into the more detail what we can see choosing these microcontroller is uh, uh, really very difficult and it must be efficient and the cost, effect cost effective and while analyzing the need of the microcontroller based project we must first see whether it is an 8 bit 16 bit 32 bit or 64 bit and how much computational power it can handle such as what is the speed and what is the highest speed of the microcontroller which it supports what is the packaging size uh, what is the the packaging uh, the type such as the dip uh, the quad, uh, uh, the quad flat package QFP or QFN. Okay, why? Once you select your microcontroller, now you need to solder it with your PCB. Then you have to understand what type of uh, uh, this microcontroller is. I mean, is it uh, the quad in the flat or it is the DPI DIP, which will be really very useful to solder it. And then you can see what is the power consumption.
and then you can see how much ram memory or the rom you need that's when you can say what is your memory requirement and then you can see how many numbers of input and the output ports or the output pins you want and then finally you can say what is the cost per unit okay so once you decide these parameters then i think after that you will be able to make a wise decision even apart from that these parameters you have to also look around and you have to see what are the other resources available what are the resources available to program that microcontroller okay so the resources available such as the IDE, compilers, the programming language, technical vendors, the technical supports, is it available or not? If you choose any microcontroller for which the resources are not available, then it will be really very difficult to make your projects. Because once you get stuck somewhere, there would be nobody who will be able to help you. And the third criteria is choosing a microcontroller. Is it ready? Uh, uh, it is readily available into needed quantity into the market or not right and uh, what is the future support for that type of microcontroller that's mean you can see the reliability the future availability etc okay so these are the few basic uh, uh, the requirements and the understanding which you have to make before you select your microcontroller for your project so in this throughout this tutorial series we will be selecting a vr microcontroller and uh, we will go with the atmega microcontroller especially at mega 32 and the 16 microcontrollers and then we will be doing uh, the coding of this embedded system into the assembling uh, assembly as well as a c so these two type of coding uh, language we will be taking hand on hand together okay so now the another question comes here uh, what are the uh, the components which we are going to cover in this series so in this avr microcontroller we are going to cover almost everything that's mean from start to end so it starts from the introduction and then we will end it with ADC, DSC, the timer, GPIO, etc. etc. So these programming we will be doing throughout this tutorial series. Now in last but not least we are going to review some questions and I am going to ask an answer of these questions. So the first question you have this is a true and the false type of question in which it says that the microcontrollers are normally less expensive than a microprocessor. If you remember, I am sure in a previous tutorial I had covered the difference between microcontroller and a microprocessor. If you remember and if you can recall it, then you will see there microcontrollers are less expensive why because it has every peripheral on the chip itself it don't need any external peripheral but microprocessor needs external peripherals that's why that is more expensive so you can say this is a true the next question is when comparing a system board based on a microcontroller and a general purpose microprocessor which one is cheaper so the question is you have a board with the microcontroller and the general purpose microprocessor then which one is cheaper of course the microcontroller have is less expensive then of course the embedded board microcontroller enabled embedded board will be less expensive then here the answer is micro microcontroller and the third question has microcontroller normally has a switch of the following devices uh, microcontroller normally has 
which of the following devices on chip so this is the microcontroller the microcontroller have this device on chip this device on chip and this one also so these are the peripherals that's mean the answer will be all of the above now the fourth question is a general purpose microprocessor normally needs which of the following device to be attached to it a general purpose microprocessor needs almost everything as a microcontroller so it needs ram it needs rom it needs input outputs that's when the answer is all of the above so the difference is only in a microcontroller all these abc comes on chip itself but in a microprocessor the user has to attach ram rom and input output the fifth question is an embedded system is also called dedicated system why the answer is embedded system means that the application uh the, it is a embedded system means it's a application specific it is dedicated because it does only a certain type of job that's when the dedicated only for a certain type of job that's why it is known as a dedicated system the sixth question is what does the term embedded system mean of course the very fundamental question what is the embedded system embedded system means that the application and the processor are combined into a single system and it do a very specific task now here we have another question which says that why does having multiple source of given product matter that's mean multiple sources of a given product matter having multiple sources for a given part means that you are not hostage to one supplier let's say you have selected one type of microcontroller let's say a and if this microcontroller is being made by only the supplier b then you have to be dependent on the supplier b and if anything goes wrong to the supplier b then your productions and your future product will get stuck with the b but if you have a multiple sources let's say the a b c d and e then what happens even if b get stuck somewhere and anything happen to the b then you can switch to the c you can switch to the d you can switch to the e even um having a multiple sources then the price can be also competitive and you can also place your own terms and conditions while buying uh, buying a microcontroller or the processor in bulk from any of these manufacturer or the suppliers so this is all about in this video in which we have reviewed few questions about embedded system and we have also reviewed how to choose a microcontroller So thank you so much for watching this video please do not forget to subscribe this channel so that you can get updates directly into your inbox bye bye